Welcome back to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. We are talking with two-time WSOP bracelet winner and two-time Venetian Deep Stack champion winner. Both of them back to back the World Series bracelets back in 2005. The Venetian Deep Stacks just recently in 2021, uh, taking home over $200,000 combined. Um, Mark, you were prolific back in the day playing in so many tournaments were around as we as i mentioned uh commentator even for the professional poker tour but if you look at your hendon mob over the last several years some caches at the world series of poker but primarily not much uh play outside of that i guess the easy question my friend is where'd you go <laughs> Well, uh, thanks, thanks for the intro again, Bernie. Um, I, so I have not played hardly any tournament poker in the last 10 years. I have not left Vegas for tournament poker in over 10 years. Uh, I've yeah. only played uh, not even that many World Series of Poker events, probably somewhere between, I'd say, six or seven up to maybe a dozen uh, in the years that I played the most events. Um, what have I been doing? I've been uh, a dad. <laughs> uh, I got married in 2005, uh, and I we immediately started a family, uh, Jennifer and I, and we had two two girls, uh, two amazing girls, Sarah and Ashley, and uh, they're now 15 and 13. And I wow. have been, uh, I have been their chauffeur, their soccer coach, their um, uh, everything. <laughs> I just, Jennifer and I uh, have focused our lives on, on just raising kids, good kids. Yeah. And unfortunately they are great kids. So that, that's what I've been doing. I've enjoyed staying home. I've enjoyed playing cash games at the Bellagio uh, these years. I, I haven't been completely outside of poker, not playing poker, yeah. but just tournaments are, are so demanding and sure, you know, and playing the, the full gamut would, it, it's so expensive and it takes such a big commitment, you know, you got to right. travel around the world and you got to go from one stop to another, and you really got to be, uh, for lack of a better word, kind of self-centered, selfish, mm. focused mm. to to play against these guys that are, are doing that just that. Um, so it's it's hard on relationships, it's hard on family life, and uh, I felt like uh, my family just took priority. Right. Well, well, it's similar to I, I totally uh, understand your your scenario. As you know, I, I've spent a lot of time with my kids as they are now crazy high school, just graduated high school and one's a rising junior. So I understand um, you kind of did a, uh, you know, for lack of better in the entertainment world, the Garth Brooks scenario, right? I, at your height decides to take off and spend time with the family. And then maybe as they get older, start coming back into uh, the back to your world and which is what it is. And like you said, cash, so much easier time-wise, not necessarily the game, but time-wise. Hey, I got 12 hours or six hours where I can basically, I have free, so I'm going to go play. And at the end of that six hours, ding, I can walk out the door no matter where I am, up, down, even, whatever. That's just not the case in a tournament, especially, you know, like this example, this 800 uh, No Limit Ultimate stack that you just played uh, recently, I mean, you're committed. It's three, four days. If you make it that far, you're there for the entire. It's not like at eight o'clock you're like, yeah, you know what? I I got I got to go home and cook dinner. Uh, I'll be back in three hours. I mean, this doesn't work that way. And so obviously, it's a it's a it's a much bigger commitment. Um, now that you you've played uh, some uh, some events, are you looking forward to some of the World Series events this summer? Oh, absolutely. Let, let me just back up and, and speak to yeah. what you just said. So typically I would drop my girls off at school. I would yeah. go to the Bellagio, wait for a game to start or start a game. I would play in that until it was time to pick them up. And then I pick them up. And no matter, like you said, no matter where I was, you know, I'm, I'm picking up and, and picking up my girls. Right, and, right. Uh, it's, a, it's a great lifestyle. I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. And I had a lot of fun. And uh, it, it's a great way to make a living if you can do that. Um, yeah. But like you said, the tournaments, that was the one of the, the big things I didn't know if I could handle the 13 or 14 hour days again. Um, and, and that's what this tournament essentially did. I, I played in five events 
I cashed in three and I won two. And so I was there 13 hours a day, day right. after day after day after day. And um, boy, the, the massage therapist made a lot of money on me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm old and tight, but uh, but you I had was, to win, you had to win the first one just to break even with the massage therapist. <laughs> exactly. I, I remember back in the day in the early and mid 2000s, uh, where I would literally budget ten to twelve thousand dollars for the World Series of Poker for massages, uh, and so uh, yeah, no. But but it's a cost of doing business in my case, you know. Right, right, right. So, you should almost hire a private one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not a bad idea. There you go. I don't know. I don't think it would have been the casinos though. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but in any case, uh, so yes, I am very much looking forward to the World Series of Poker. Uh, I do every year. I get excited every year. It, it's it just so happens to come at a time where it's very difficult for me, given the soccer club that right. They, director of now yeah. I'm executive director of prime soccer club in las vegas it's a competitive youth soccer club i love doing it kids are amazing i love sports i love kids uh this is this has absolutely been a, a dream come true type of job for the most part and uh and, and and tryouts are typically in june so i always have to miss a few days of the world series of poker and then i settle in and play a few events so i hope that they move it to October permanently, quite honestly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Kind of weird in Vegas, it's not as hot. And uh, it's beautiful in Vegas, actually. Yeah, but yeah, the golf clubs can come out and really, really be played. I'm sure the golf <laughs> courses in that area will go nuts with all these poker players who play golf. I, I would yeah. definitely bring my club, so it'd be yeah, interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about it. You know, going into these events at the Venetian, um, how did you feel tournament wise, or was this really kind of a playing out? Let's see how I do based off of, you know, like you said, you're, you're curious to see how, if you could last the, the 10, 13 hour days. Right. No, I, I was, I, I went in with no expectations to be mm -hmm. honest with you. I went in there just trying to get warmed up for the world series. I figured I got to play some tournaments and what better place to start with some huge fields and the buy-ins are deceptive. You know, back back when I played a lot of tournaments, the buy-in was the buy-in, unless it was a rebuy. And then you would just say rebuy, and some tournament director would come over, take your cash, and drop some chips off. Right. Uh, now, everything, as you know, is almost always re-entry. Right. So, um, you know, you play until you get broke, and then you go to the window, you buy back in, you come to a new table, new opponents, new stack. Um, so, uh, you can get into a $600 tournament for $2,400, like I did. Uh, I can't, so the first event I played in, uh, there were 16 or 1700 players. I came in like 98th place. I cashed for 1500 and I lost 900 uh, <laughs> played for like two full days. It's pretty yeah. tired. The next event, fortunately I won it. It was actually a one day tournament. Uh, where we played from 11 a.m. until like 4 a.m. and I, I won that one. And then the one after that is the 800. I was in that for 30, no, yeah, 3,200 again. So four bullets again. And then I, of course, cash for 193,000 in there. Right. So um, it's been, it's it, the buy-ins are deceptive. You know, if you're going to play this with any sort of intent to win, you have to be prepared to fire more than one bullet. Right. Uh, it turns out, like I said, the six hundred dollar buy-in event that I won, I only fired one bullet. That's just right. The way it was right. Right. Um, the eight hundred, I, I fired four bullets in order. To right. Right. It. And you really have to look at it with regards to that, just kind of your comfort level, right? Some people may be like, I can only fire two bullets in this event. And, and knowing that obviously makes a difference. And, and in a lot of respects, it's almost like you played four tournaments, right? You, you, you kind of went back in four times uh, to play in this. It obviously gives a lot of um, uh, flexibility for people who show up in an event. It used to be basically a freeze out. You get knocked out, you go home. Right. And uh, I know in LA, that was an issue with some of the World Series circuit events and other events as well. But when they had only freeze outs, the fields were actually somewhat lower because people were like, I don't want to drive an hour through traffic 
and then potentially get knocked out in the first hand and then have to come all the way back home. Right. And so the re-entries, obviously, since the Black Friday back about 10 years ago, uh, you know, that that re-entry uh, has really helped keep the poker economy going and, and keep rising the prize pools. And obviously, after COVID, this has really helped uh, as, as prize pools are going through the roof. Um, talking about COVID, how was your experience uh, during COVID? Uh, obviously, playing cash uh, kind of went away, but must have been even more time with the family. Yeah. Um, so personally speaking, uh, I'd never uh, spent a day in the hospital, but I, I got COVID. Oh, wow. At, at the end of December. And by the middle of January, I actually had to be hospitalized for six days. Wow. Uh, I, I had a, a really bad case of, of uh, COVID lungs, if you will. Yeah. yeah uh, it, it affected my breathing. Uh, I'm otherwise very, very healthy, but uh, but I I did spend six days, like I said, in the hospital because my oxygen level dropped a lot. And, wow. Uh, yeah, so yeah. so for, for some people who have not been affected directly with COVID or no friends, kind of how long were you sick before you went into the hospital? So I got COVID December 30th. Uh -huh. I um, was doing fine until uh, January 12th. So mm. almost two weeks. Funny wow. thing is my... Uh, I have a great doctor, who uh, Dr. Stanton, who basically called it. He said, "Listen, the only thing I'm worried about is your breathing because you have you have asthma." He said, "I think you're going to do just fine, but basically, if you're you get a pulse oximeter, put it on your finger, and once you hit like 85 or drop below 85, you're going to the emergency room, and then yeah. we're going to take drastic measures." Yeah. And sure enough, that and he said it happens about 10. 10, 10, 10 days in, 10, 12 days in. Yeah. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened with me. I was a little stubborn. I wait, waited until I got into the 70s, the low 70s. My buddy came yeah. over and said, you got to go. And, uh, and, and, and that was it. I, I, I went in there. I, I got taken care of very well. I got every possible treatment and uh, came out of it. Um, you know, pr pretty good. Uh, I still have uh, some symptoms that I, I guess I've technically been classified as COVID long hauler and to the extent that my lungs are still showing a little bit of uh, damage, but we're hoping that takes care of itself. But uh, I did not play. I did not play after that, obviously, yeah. for a long time. I probably played two or three times cash games prior to uh, this last week where I started playing in terms. So I, I did not play just because right. I, uh, one, was not feeling hundred percent and two the game i mean we were shut down for a long time right and the game changed to to be six hand which i love by the way i love shorthanded but it was just very hard to get a table right uh, there were many more players than there were tables and they literally had to limit capacity so there was you know i think at the bellagio at some point there were 17 or 20 tables available but once they're taken up no new games can start so you can go there and wait three, four hours, which just isn't my thing. Right, 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 right. right. And by that time, you have to leave. <laughs> yeah, that's so, I'm done. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, it, as you said, it, it's better now, but still, some kind of sometimes a little tough breathing, uh, just because of the long haul effects. Yeah, I mean that's the only thing that, that is still affecting me. I just have a little bit of uh, what they call a ground glass opacity. Mm -hmm. and some nodules uh, fortunately i've seen some great doctors and some lung experts and they said it's not lung cancer this is totally covid related it may or may not reverse itself but basically it, it's so minimal that it would only affect me if i was like a, a competitive athlete yeah so yeah yeah it shouldn't, shouldn't shouldn't affect me that much you you won't be running any marathons anytime soon i guess <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this fat boy doesn't do that <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about the events themselves. And, you know, you had said, let's see how no expectations. Let's see how the tournaments go. What did you learn the, these few tournaments that, you know, how we, we talked about it previously a little bit about how the world is different than it was a decade and a half ago, where you could run over tables, players, really not everyone understood how to play, but, as we talked about, there's so many more. I think the majority of people who sit down at these events, maybe that's too much of a statement, but 
a, th there's definitely more people that understand a little bit more about tournament poker, whether they've seen some trainings online, whether they've read books, whether they even have friends that they talk to. What learnings did you come out of this that helped prepare you for the World Series and maybe a tip or two that uh, you can give people who are now looking forward to October and playing in the World Series so that they can prepare in this really different era? Sure. So uh, I think the generality you made about players being better today, the majority of them is, is close, pretty, pretty accurate, but I think there's still, there's still weak spots out there. Yep. Yep. Uh, especially when you, you know, you look at tournament buy-ins in, in the hundreds, as opposed to the thousands, the, the class of the field really does <clears throat> on the buy-in. Right. You know, $5,000 event was very different, played very differently than the 600s and 800s and thousands. So, um, you're still going to find weak spots and you really do have to be almost like a, uh, you know, I used to call it, you know, a, 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 like a, a lion in the jungle, just lying in wait and looking for that wounded yeah. wildebeest. Right. 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 And you try to separate them from the pack. And right. Go after them. So that's primarily what I did. I tried to identify weak spots. I tried to enter pots with them with hands that, uh, could, could make big hands set, you know, set a pocket pair where I can make a set, flush draws, straight draws, things like that. And uh, really tried to play pots against weaker players. Against the stronger players, that those that identified as being stronger and creative, I tried to play them pretty much straight up. And, um, you know, big hand, try to have a big hand in those spots. Or if I felt like they were good enough to lay down a big hand, maybe I would get a little creative if I had the stacks. Stacks, though, I can't emphasize stacks enough. I, I really do think the game has changed enough to where stack size has become really, really important. Yeah. And I will play the stack as much as I will play the cards and the opponent now. Um, I will take far more chances with a stack that can't hurt me versus uh, a stack that can. not And so I really do pay uh, very, very close attention to stack sizes and how they're changing because they're always changing right every right. hand something happens to somebody's stack and something happens to at least one other person's stack too so uh so i'm just paying super close attention like like we said but i'm really playing uh, situational stack size poker relative to the blinds and people don't understand uh, a lot of people don't understand the way the blinds are increasing you really have to keep factoring in how how advantageous is it to steal? Right. I would sometimes purposely show, try to show a very snug image just before there's going to be a big jump in blinds and annies, such that my my table image is pretty solid. And then once things change to a point where I know now people are trying to creep into the money, people are looking for the next increase of a couple thousand dollars. And they're playing tight now my game's just wide 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 open and i'm right really really coming after the blinds and annies also the the time frame is pretty important to you you look at the stacks but early on in a tournament especially when it's a re-entry you know you got players who are like eh, i got a flush draw let's go you know that kind of thing but once yeah. that re-entry time frame stops yeah. now i always look at okay now the tournament starts right because now we're really all serious right we're not all just like okay i'll just break out another 600 another 600 another 600 you know especially against some of these um full-time pros where 600 you know they're normally buying in for 3500 they, they look at 600 like whatever you know that kind of thing so uh that's important too because you don't want to take those kind of chances uh level three where somebody can just call just a call right that's exactly right that's a good point you're making and that's and that's essentially how i play you know i'm going to be far less likely to lay down a big hand even though i think i'm beat when it's early on and i can just rebuy pretty quickly right uh, once once the 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 rebuy period has stopped yeah now i've got to probably you know think long and hard before i get committed to you know big pair or something like that Right, right, right. So um, 
what is the future? Is the future more tournaments now? As, as the kids get older, I under, totally understand. As the kids get older, you get a little bit more flexibility. I play more golf than I used to play five, six years ago because uh, the kids can make breakfast themselves. Yeah. Uh, but uh, kind of what's uh, what's kind of the future now? Is it more tournaments or potentially more travel as well? Or obviously Vegas is now hopping with tournaments all the time. So you probably don't have to. I love traveling. I love exploring new places. Um, unfortunately, when I was playing 15 years ago, uh, from one tournament to the other, I, I got to do very little sightseeing and yeah. touristy type stuff and enjoying where I was. I would typically fly in the night before the main event. I'd play in the main event, and then I would change my flight to, uh, to, to get me out of there within a couple of hours of getting knocked out. No yeah. matter how much it cost, I wanted to get out of there. It's just that sort of I don't know what it is. Maybe you feel that way too. Maybe others. I I just want out. Uh, I'm not yeah. a happy camper when I get knocked out. So I'm just want right. Um, now that my girls are are 13 and 15, and and basically my breathing uh, bothers them, or, or just being alive bothers them, I can uh, go out and do stuff, uh, and uh, and they're not gonna uh, need me like you said. And <laughs> quite honestly, they probably prefer that <laughs> time. So. Dad, leave me alone. <laughs> like I said, I'll be sitting here and they're like, you know, what are you doing? Why are you on your phone? Why are you <laughs> so, uh, so now I think I have an opportunity to, to really enjoy uh, traveling more and going to tournaments. Like the, the old, old days, we would go like two weeks uh, to a tournament, like 10 days or a week and you know, spend a day or two after you get knocked out seeing what's around and experiencing new restaurants and new you know places places to see and stuff like that so i'd like to return to some of that where maybe i go a couple days early and, and do some of the fun stuff to do yeah at where, uh, whatever locale that i right, go to right right and then maybe stay a few days after and, and just do some fun stuff and just enjoy it you know so i i will play more tournaments i'm probably awesome. never going to return to playing nonstop from right. stop to stop, living out of a suitcase three weeks yeah. out of the type field. But I'll play a lot more tournaments if, if I continue to do well. We'll, we'll right. see. You know, I, I don't know. This could be a fluke. You know, once every 16 years is not a – is not going <laughs> to do it. So uh, we'll, we'll have to see. If I, if I continue to do well and I'm, I still enjoy it, then I'll play a lot more. Uh, yeah. I, I don't believe in doing anything that you don't enjoy unless it's like school and you have to do it to right, 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 right. Phase of life. Uh, although I did enjoy school. So, um, but as long as it's fun and, and, you know, I've been talking to some of my friends and they said, you know, what, what, what's your attitude? Like, are you back? Or are you what? And I said, I, I'm loving it more today than I did 15 years right. ago. 15 years ago, it felt like, number one, it felt like a job. Right? Yeah, right. I was just about to say, it probably felt like a job, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't doing it for fun. I was doing it for a living. And two, um, I, I'm, I'm actually playing better and more relaxed. And uh, I, I like my game better today than I did back then. Uh, even though I had a good contrarian style, uh, my style probably isn't as contrarian today. Yeah. But, it's, uh, but I, I feel very comfortable in my skin. And, and that's part of, I think, you know, getting old, you know, getting fat and old and bald. Uh, you, you get a little more comfortable with who you are and you know who you are. And uh, I'm just having a lot of fun right now. It's been very yeah. enjoyable. You know, well, that's that's winning. the key. Yeah, that's the key, right? Just enjoying it and, and really, really uh, having fun. And, and uh, it, then, like you said, it doesn't feel like a job when it doesn't feel like a job you know, it's, it's just enjoyable again. So Mark, so great talking with you. So great catching up uh, and congratulations on your success. Uh, I saw it the first time and then we saw it back to back. I definitely said I, I have to get you on the show to talk about it and, and really talk about the experiences and reminisce about the old days. So thanks so much for coming on the show. Really, really appreciate it, my friend. My pleasure, Bernie. It's great talking to you. Great seeing you. And I'll see you when you come out next week. Absolutely. Mark Safe here, two-time WSOP Bracer winner, and now two-time Deep Stacks Venetian champion, both back-to-back. -back. 
Stay tuned. We'll continue our coverage as we start leading up to the World Series of Poker, the live version, which obviously hasn't happened in two years. We're all excited about that. And as always, may you always go in with the best hand and may you never get unlucky. Good night, everybody.